Hi guys, I'm Dis and you're watching the SUV Battle channel. In this video I gathered 18 cars to test them on diagonal suspension which are better, traditional SUVs or popular crossovers. Make yourself comfortable, we're kicking off. The first contestant is the 1995 Mitsubishi Pajero Jr. It has a four-wheel drive with a low range, quite a rare option for small cars. Having barely reached the obstacle, the car is on a diagonal suspension. The Pajero Jr. does not have a traction control system, so the unloaded wheels spin helplessly and the car stands still. Now, let's activate the low range. The Mitsubishi rolled back and tried to drive along the flatter line. The small Pajero manages to pass the first diagonal, but then an even more difficult diagonal suspension, which it couldn't cope with at all. Roll back again and drive along a more straight line with a little more momentum. The Mitsubishi slips on the second part, but successfully completes the drive. The following car is a 2019 Hyundai Tucson with a 2-liter gasoline engine. The Hyundai lifts the rear left wheel at the obstacle. This is not the first time the Tucson has participated in my tests, and its traction control system is not particularly effective. The driver took to the right to straighten the line, and the car drove further than the previous participant. Now, the driver has locked the interaxle clutch and put the gearbox in first gear. The driver steps on the gas. The wheels are skidding, but there is no hint that the Tucson will drive forward. The driver again takes to the right. The car drives along the climb per easiest part. Tucson has finished by driving along the slope and never managed to conquer it. The next participant is the Renault Duster with a 2-liter gasoline engine and a manual transmission. The rear left wheel is visibly slowing down the traction control system in action. But the Duster can't climb further. Its front left wheel is up in the air and the rear right has no grip. Now, the interaxle clutch is locked and the ESP is off. But again, nothing has changed. The car is in the same position. The Renault rolled back to drive a little to the right towards the flatter slope. The Duster's off-road capabilities are not sufficient here, so the driver took to the right and drove by the flat line. The next contestant is the Subaru Outback with gasoline 2.5 and a CVT. I compared the exact similar Outback with two Volvos and several Audis, all roads of different generations, on a long climb with a series of various obstacles. Subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss the video. Now, let's get back to our test and see how Subaru's legendary all-wheel drive tackles this obstacle. The car stopped at the first obstacle before climbing. The traction control system breaks down the unloaded wheels, but not sufficiently. Only after straightening the line, the outback pushed forward and stopped with the rear left wheel raised high. It cannot drive further from this position. The driver has turned off the ESP and enabled the X mode. Now the traction control works more aggressively. The wheels rotate at similar intervals, though this doesn't help and the driver takes a little to the right. But only after a significant drift to the right, the car drove forward through the least complicated part of the obstacle.
as you can notice, the traction control performs at best with the front wheel straight. Slight rollback and throttling without steering. That's what we expected. Next participant. The 2013 Skoda Yeti with a gasoline turbo engine is up next. This is a completely standard car. I specifically focused on this since there will be another Skoda Yeti with some engine mods. The car drives per the most challenging line and the rear wheel rises as high as possible. But it can't climb further. The ESP is disabled and the gearbox is locked in the first gear. With that confusion, the Yeti reaches the second part of the obstacle. The Skoda made a complete stop there and drove on. The car drifts to the right, lifts the front left wheel high, and throws out the dirt with both rear wheels as it had a rear locking diff. The Yeti completes its drive. It was awe-inspiring. Now, let's watch the 1991 Mitsubishi Pajero, also known as Montero. The car starts in rear-wheel drive. Perhaps the suspension articulation will be sufficient to conquer the obstacle. The Pajero takes the same line as the Skoda. The rear wheel does not come off the ground, sprinkling the dirt off the surface. Now the four-wheel drive with low range is activated. It doesn't seem to be enough. The driver locks the central differential. are still slipping, so the only option is to gain some momentum. The driver takes it a little to the right, and the Pajero, with its front left wheel up in the air, completes the race. Next participant. It's another Mitsubishi Pajero, and also without a traction control system. So there's going to be a lot of dust again. The driver took the more difficult line, and the wheels are helplessly skidding on an obstacle. An attempt to drive smoothly was unsuccessful, so let's switch to the low range. Of course, it won't do a miracle. Only the effective traction control system or rear locking differential can help here. But both aren't available in this version of the Pajero for the Gulf Countries market. By the way, I have the same car and I drive through diagonal suspensions exclusively using momentum. So that's what this driver will do now too. The driver accelerates a little, takes to the right and finishes by the most straight line. It was not a very good result for this SUV. Then, another Mitsubishi, the 2000 Montero Sport, and yes, no traction control again. Unloaded wheels are intensively slipping and raising clouds of dust. Let's activate the low range, although you know it won't work either. The only option left is to drive through the obstacle without stoppage. The next participant will have to defend the honor of Mitsubishi because this 29 Pajero Sport has everything you need for this. A traction control system and a rear interaxle diff lock. Four-wheel drive is activated and the transmission is in the drive position. At the first diagonal, where all the previous Mitsubishis could not drive further, 
After a short pause from the traction control system, the Pajero Sport confidently went forward along the most challenging line, with the rear wheel off the ground. Look how the car balances securely on only two diagonally located wheels. A short slip at the very beginning, and the Pajero Sport completes the drive on three wheels. Excellent result. Now, let's complicate the task. First, the left side of the main line should conquer the climb. Thanks to the traction control system, the Pajero Sport copes with the first part of the obstacle. The car stopped at the second spot and started driving. The traction control system gripped the slipping wheels, but this is not enough to conquer the climb. The Pajero Sport drifts to the right with its rear axle and then slips in place once again. It's time to activate the low range. Minor wheel spin at the very beginning and then a confident climb to the top. Next participant. Let's switch back from SUVs to a crossover again. The 2019 Volkswagen Tiguan. The car is taking the problematic line where frame-based off-road vehicles have just got stuck and could not drive. The Tiguan slips with suspended wheels and it's visible how the traction control slows them down. The driver revs up and the Volkswagen drives on with its rear left wheel high. The front wheel is also trying to spin, but the load on it is too high. As a result, the car rolls back. It may seem that the attempt has failed, but the driver does not give up and continues climbing. The Tiguan passed the obstacle's first part, slowed down a little on the second, and reached the final section by hanging the front left wheel. The unloaded wheels are actively skidding and raising clouds of dust. The driver gave more RPMs, and the Tiguan spectacularly completed the drive on three wheels. This time, the Tiguan drives with locked first gear because there was a lack of torque during the previous attempt due to shifting. It's the most challenging line considering Volkswagen's front overhang. Nevertheless, the Tiguan quickly passes the first part of the obstacle. The car drifts slightly to the right at the second spot with the rear left wheel raised high. The Tiguan completes the drive with the front wheel lifted high off the ground with sufficient torque delivered. Now another crossover, the 2020 Jaguar E-Pace. The Jaguar has slightly more horsepower than the Tiguan, so let's see how it will affect the performance. The Jaguar is in comfort driving mode. The E-Pace drives along a slightly flatter line than the Tiguan. The little Jag easily coped with the first part of the obstacle and flew over the second spot, quickly getting to the third part. With almost no drifting to the right, the Jaguar drives to the top. An outstanding result. Now, let's activate the low friction mode and drive by the Tiguan's line. It may seem like I am trying to advertise the Jaguar, but look at how the suspended wheels of the E-Pace rotate significantly slower than the Tiguan's, and the Jag confidently copes with the first obstacle. The driver again misses the second spot, but stops entirely at the third one. With more throttling, the wheels start rotating more actively. Finally, the rear axle drifts a little, and you can see how the front-loaded wheel tries to pull the car forward, and the Jaguar safely completes the drive. Both drives of the Jaguar were very different from the Volkswagens. That's why it is difficult to determine the strengths and weaknesses of each. I suggest to discussing this in the comments. Write whose performance you like the most, Volkswagen Tiguan or Jaguar E-Pace. Now, back to SUVs. And the next participant is the 2007 Toyota Land Cruiser Prado with off-road tires, but no traction control. Again, the outcome is predictable, keeping in mind the Pajeros. The Prado is driving by the challenging line. Here's the diagonal suspension and the Toyota's wheels started digging deep holes.
The Prado rolls back and tries to drive along the flatter line. Driving to the right and making the unloaded wheels touch the ground is not enough to push forward. The Toyota drives along the slope and turns to the left at the spot where the crossovers could cross the diagonal. But this SUV stands still, actively slipping and digging new holes. As a result, a rollback and driving is the only possible way. The next participant is the Land Cruiser Prado, but now with the traction control system. This Prado is taking the more difficult line. The traction control engages immediately after short wheel spin. As the revs increase, the Prado pushed forward and reached the third spot. The Toyota slips a little more actively and drives to the top. A significant difference from the previous participant. Another drive by the Prado, but this time in the low range. The traction control engaged immediately on the first obstacle. As a result, the Toyota stopped at the second spot, stretching the rear wheel to maximum travel. As soon as the driver touched the gas pedal, Prado immediately drives forward, even on three wheels. No trouble on this spot either. Next participant. Another Toyota, but now we have a 2012 Land Cruiser 200 with a gasoline V8. The Land Cruiser took the hard line. However, due to the long wheelbase and suspension travel, the wheels didn't come off the ground at the first spot. The LC200 drives precisely to throttle and effortlessly reaches the final point as if there was no obstacles at all. And this is the Skoda Yeti with engine modifications. Its gasoline turbo engine produces 340 horsepower. Let's see how this affects overcoming these obstacles. The first gear limits the gearbox. The Skoda raised the rear wheel high at first, and the driver rushed on without stopping. The Skoda slowed down and then, with renewed vigor, gave out a portion of active slipping. The unloaded wheels began to spin equally, but without pushing the car forward. The next step is to disable the ESP. The Skoda straightened the line with the pedal to the metal mode and, with wild wheel spin, almost flew off to the next mountain on three wheels. Another drive of the Yeti, but this time the ESP is off from the very beginning and with the first gear locked. The driver presses the gas at first and the Skoda soars up, keeping the line. However, please pay attention to how far it drives after conquering the final spot. Passing the obstacles in this manner can be very risky in cramped conditions. The next participant is the 2008 Volkswagen Touareg. The car is actively used for off-roading, and today we will find out how good it is at overcoming diagonal suspension. Volkswagen is driving by the problematic line. The Touareg continues pushing after a slight slippage, and now its front left wheel is fully suspended. Throttling and all wheels except the front right wheel are actively skidding, and the car drifts to the right. As soon as the engine delivered sufficient torque, the Touareg completed the conquest of the obstacle. Now, let's try again, but with the low range activated. This time, a slightly different line. The Volkswagen efficiently manages the first spot by stopping with the rear left wheel hanging. 
the driver throttles and the Touareg is already at the third spot. The engine doesn't rev high in low range mode as it did in the previous attempt and the car confidently completes the drive. Now, another car from Germany, the 2002 BMW X5 with a mighty gasoline V8. The work of the traction control system is clearly visible on the first obstacle. The suspended wheels skid and then they practically freeze and the car goes uphill. At the second spot, the picture is almost the same. Slight slippage while waiting for the traction control system and then moving forward. Front wheel in the air, throttle, slight slip, and the X5 is on top. And all this on, though wide, but by no means off-road worthy tires. To secure the result and nullify any doubts, another run of the BMW X5. But now the driver will drive as smooth as possible. Look at the rear left wheel. At some point, it does not rotate at all, although the car is moving forward. The situation is the same with the front wheel. That's the traction control system doing its job. We expose the BMW at the third spot with the front left wheel high. Absolutely no drifting off the line, and without prolonged slipping, the X5 completes the drive. The final participant is the Swedish 2019 Volvo XC90 with a gasoline 2.0 liter turbo engine. Volvo passes the first spot and arrives at the second with the rear left wheel in the air. The traction control clamps the slipping wheels, but that's not sufficient for these conditions. Only after a while, the Volvo managed to advance further, reaching the third point. And now, the front left wheel is in the air. Do you remember how easily and playfully the BMW X5 drove out of this position? The Volvo has to wait and steer to find the easiest path and climb up the hill. And now the traditional awarding of places. In the crossover category, the worst results were shown by the Hyundai Tucson, Renault Duster and Subaru Outback. These three cars drove by the flattest line. The Hyundai and the Renault lacked the efficiency of the traction control system, and the Subaru clearly lacked engine power. Anticipating the outrage of Subaru fans, I propose to wait for the release of the video of the Battle of the All-Terrain Wagons, where the difference between the Outbacks with naturally aspirated engines versus various Audis with more powerful engines is very clearly visible. The fourth place goes to the Volvo XC90. Although it was able to maintain the straightness of the movement, there was a feeling that the car was driving to the limit. If the incline was a little steeper, then probably we would have seen the same thing that happened with a similar Volvo XC90 at the Battle of Premium Crossover. The Swedish crossover showed the worst result in comparison to classmates with three liter turbo engine, and it is most likely due to the lack of torque. The third place is occupied by both Skoda Yetis and the Volkswagen Tiguan. They actively skidded during the drives, but still confidently conquered the climb. The second place goes to the BMW X5. A crossover designed for dynamic driving on paved roads showed excellent performance of the traction control system, even despite the age and road tires. And of course, the powerful V8 made its contribution with a reserve of traction in a wide RPM range. The first place in the crossover classification is awarded to the Jaguar E-Pace. The dark horse of this test, and no one expected such a result from it. Yes, it skidded while overcoming the obstacles, but compared to both the Yetis and the Tiguan, the Jaguar had significantly fewer idle wheel rotations. And in comparison with the BMW, the E-Pace also has road tires, but at the same time, substantially less torque. So the Jag deserves the first place. In the SUV category, the outsiders were the Pajero Junior, the Pajeros of two generations, the Montero Sport, and the 2007 Land Cruiser Prado. All of them failed to conquer the climb smoothly, but that doesn't make them bad off-roaders. The lack of the traction control system is compensated by the high ground clearance and tough suspension to overcome such obstacles in motion. 
the third place is given to the Mitsubishi Pajero Sport. The Mitsu could have taken a higher position if not for a weak engine. This was especially evident at the second spot. And only with a significant increase in revs, this SUV copes with the obstacle. The second place goes to the Volkswagen Touareg. The powerful engine and the prompt traction control system ensured the confident drive, except for a few nuances. Inactivity of the front right wheel, prolonged slip, and minor drift at the exit. And yet, the Volkswagen had toothy off-road tires. The first place in the SUV class is expectably occupied by Toyotas, the 2014 Land Cruiser Prado, and the 2012 Land Cruiser 200. Toyota's active traction control has long proven itself positively. Therefore, even being on standard tires, the Prado effortlessly coped with all the obstacles. The Land Cruiser surprised with an impressive articulation of the suspension. The LC200 was the only participant who had all four wheels always in contact with the ground. I would like to take this opportunity to remind you about the Clash of the Titans Part 2 video, where we compared the work of the four-wheel drive of the Land Cruiser 200 with the new Toyota Land Cruiser 300 and several other SUVs. The link to this video is in the description. That's all for me. Write in the comments which car surprised you and from which one you expected more. I'm Diaz. See you in the following video.